If you are someone familiar with global economic affairs, you may surely have heard about the Black Monday term, which was used to describe one of the worst stock market collapses in history. This happened globally on October 19, 1987, bringing some unexpected and severe negative effects on most economies. According to the estimation, it had caused a loss of around $1.71 trillion at the end of the day. This raised a fear of long-term global economic instability as well. Through this video, we will discuss this great economic hazard that happened in the 19th century. During the period between 1982 to 1987, most of the stock markets experienced a bullish trend for more than five years. It had caused a rise in Dow Jones Industrial Average Value known by the acronym DJIA from 776 to 2772, which used to monitor the U.S. stock markets. So during this period, the largest 19 economies experienced an average rise of 296% until this crash happened. So the prices of the stocks reached an unsustainable level, causing an overvaluation of companies. Finally, this trend overturned, resulting in a huge collapse. Investors' psychology made a considerable effect on the decline experienced on Black Monday. When there was immense selling pressure on the market, investors got panicked easily and went directly to selling decisions without analyzing the behavior of the market. The increasing use of computerized trading systems, specifically program trading, played a significant role in the crash. Program trading involves the use of complex algorithms and computer programs to execute large-scale trades automatically. On Black Monday, many institutional investors and traders had programmed their computers to sell stocks automatically when certain conditions were met. As the market began to decline, these computer-driven selling programs were triggered, exacerbating the downward spiral and causing a cascade of selling orders. There were some international economic factors which led to the creation of a sense of uncertainty in the financial market and also led to this huge crash. Some of these factors were ongoing trade imbalance between countries, increasing tension between the U.S. and Iran, and devaluation of the U.S. dollar, which resulted in uneasiness in the financial markets, opening the doors for the collapse that happened on Black Monday. When the market was under a huge selling pressure, there were not enough investors to step in and buy those stocks at falling prices. This clearly depicted the lack of liquidity in the market, which worsened the situation and intensified the selling pressure. On October 14, the United States Department of Commerce announced high trade deficit figures, sending a shockwave through the economy, which was strong enough to create a negative impact on the value of the U.S. dollar, resulting in a rise of interest rates and a decline of stock prices. As a result of the things that happened within one day, DJIA declined by 95.42 points and on the next day by 57.61 points. On the third day, it was reduced further by 108.35 points, initiating a selling trend in the stock market. Then the weekend was there, and people wanted to sell the shares as signs of a greater decline had already been received. Everyone was waiting for Monday to sell the shares at the highest possible price that they can sell, and this led to create a heavy selling pressure in the market over Saturday and Sunday. At the same time, large mutual fund groups allowed their customers to easily redeem their shares at a rate equal to the price when the market was closed on Friday, as they saw that something was going to happen in the market. Unfortunately, the redemption requests made by the customers were much higher than the cash reserves of those mutual fund groups. The only option that these mutual fund groups had was to sell large volume shares on Monday morning to generate the money that they needed. The growing situation directly influenced the buying and selling patterns of most of the traders, and they started to get ahead of the market by selling aggressively at the earliest possible chance that these traders had on Monday morning. Even before the market was opened, the background was ready for a heavy crash, as there were a lot of investors who wanted to sell their shares. This created downward pressure on prices, leading to the crash of the market. Regulations during that period allowed necessary freedom for market makers to delay or suspend if there is an order imbalance between the buying and selling volumes of the stocks. So, market makers used that option to control the sudden crash of the market by delaying the opening of the market for more than 95% of stocks in the S&P 500 index. Even though the market was open so late, Nothing was able to resist that heavy selling trend within the last 90 minutes of trading. All the stocks experienced a heavy crash. Total trading volume was very high, and for that reason, 
computers and communication systems were unnecessarily busy as thousands of sellers was on the queue to sell their stocks. This crash is referred in countries like Australia and New Zealand as Black Tuesday, as it was the next day for the countries like that. Stocks in Australia fell by 40%, and New Zealand experienced a heavy crash equivalent with the two-third of its 1987 peak. One of the biggest crashes was observed in the Hang Seng Index of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, as its share value dropped by 45.8%. Despite the market in London being closed since October 16th due to the Great Storm of 1987, it experienced a heavy crash of 23% within the first two days of the economic failure. With the timeline difference and many other reasons, this crash is referred as Blue Tuesday in Japan. However, its market decline was relatively low compared to other major economies, recording a 14% decline. With the experience that market makers got from this heavy crash, the circuit breaker rule was introduced as a measure to avoid the happening of such a sudden crash in the future. Under this regulation, stock trade will be halted for 15 seconds when a certain stock crashes by more than 7% within one day. The Black Monday crash prompted regulators to reassess existing market regulations and develop new ones. The crisis highlighted the need for enhanced market surveillance, circuit breakers, and risk management practices to prevent excessive volatility and market manipulation. These regulatory changes aim to create a more resilient and transparent financial system. Governments and central banks worldwide took measures to address the crisis and stabilize financial markets. Central banks, including the Federal Reserve in the United States, injected liquidity into the system to prevent a complete collapse. Authorities also implemented regulatory changes aimed at strengthening the financial system and improving risk management practices. The Black Monday crisis served as a valuable lesson for investors, regulators, and policymakers. It highlighted the importance of risk management, diversification, and maintaining a long-term perspective in investing. The crisis also underscored the need for effective regulatory oversight and coordination among financial institutions and regulatory bodies. In that way, one of the worst economic collapses in history happened in 1987 within less than five days. Even though some nations recovered soon from this huge economic disaster, most of the nations took several years to move out of the negative consequences. However, this taught a very important lesson to the regulatory authorities as well as investors associated with the stock markets, creating an opportunity for them to take necessary measures to avoid such disasters in the future. What do you think about the Black Monday crash that happened in 1987? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. That's the end of today's story. Subscribe to us to educate yourself with more interesting economic news like this. Thank you for staying with us.